probably could have called our guest coming up in just a few minutes. She'll be with us in about 30 minutes or so. She's a different kind of nanny. We're going to have a segment on a grandmother. She's not the only one in this country. This one travels. She travels about 500 miles every single week, gets up at 4 in the morning to get a flight out of Houston at 6 o'clock in the morning to babysit her 2-year-old grandson for her daughter, who is in med school. She's going to be a doctor. The family says this is actually a cost-effective solution. So... Tell us about your creative uh, child care solutions. You can email us at Skinnerville at foxnews.com. Sounds like this is happening more often than you might think. That's coming up in about 30 minutes. You could call her the super granny, a Texas grandmother. She goes to great lengths, getting on a plane at 6 o'clock in the morning, flying to be her nanny for her grandson, and then flying back home about 48 hours later. We're going to be joined by that grandmother and her daughter to explain how the situation works, this alternative form of babysitting, why it's cost effective for them. And did you know a lot of families are doing this across the country? We'll tell you about them coming up. A granny who goes the distance, you could say, to babysit for her kids. You know, one observer said grandparents are kind of like the family national guard. They step in when there's a need and then they leave active duty. Well, wait till you hear about Angela Kim's active duty schedule, what she does. And we'd like to know, what are your creative child care solutions? She flies 500 miles a week. What about in your family? You can email us at Skinnerville at foxnews.com. We'll be right back. She goes the extra mile for her little grandson. She flies about 500 miles every single week from Houston to Dallas to help her daughter who is a doctor and she's just about done with school and to help her care for the little boy it's long distance child care so while the mother is at work she doesn't have to worry about a stranger taking care of her child and from the emails I've been getting from viewers uh, this family the Kim family is not alone we've got just a couple of them I'm going to read real quickly a lot of flying grandfathers out there it's being pointed out to me Joe from Tucson uh, from Tombstone Arizona says he drives 190 miles from Tombstone to Tucson every single day to babysit his grandson. And the Drenth family in Wyoming says they actually fly in uh, the husband's mother from Amsterdam when they go out of town. Angela Kim is the traveling grandmother. She's in Houston, where her home is, and her daughter Andrea is in Dallas, and they both join us now. Andrea, I'm going to put up on the screen the schedule that your mom goes through every single week. Starts Tuesday morning, where she gets up at 4.45 in the morning to catch the 6.30 flight out of Houston. She gets you to work in time in Dallas for your 8 o'clock shift, but my first thought was, what if her flight is late? What do you do? Um, luckily, we haven't had to deal with that. Um, we leave ourselves a little bit of cushion time in case that happens, but um, we've had some close calls. Um, if I'm late, I'm late, and I call ahead, but we haven't had to deal with that, so that's been good. And Angela, you turn around Wednesday night after that Tuesday morning, early morning, and go home on the 7.30 flight, and I guess your husband picks you up back home in Houston. That sounds a little bit crazy, and it sounds absolutely exhausting, is it? Yeah, it is. Everybody th thought it was crazy, but it worked out. And why do you do it? Why did I do it? Well, Andrea needs my help more than anything else at that time. And it's about our grandchild. And that's why I did it. And I, I did it because I could do it. And um, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, Andrea, and I understand this is about to come to an end because you're about to graduate and your mom has said, that's it. <laughs> Once you're done with school, right. you're on your own. Why not just you know, hire a local babysitter, a nanny, daycare, something like that? I mean, how is this possibly cost effective for you? Yeah, um, it wasn't about the cost so much. Um, I have plenty of friends who, and resident moms who have successfully done the, the daycare and anything and have gotten great results and feel very comfortable. But at the end of my maternity leave, when, I was, um, when Noah was eight weeks old, I just couldn't get myself to that point where I was comfortable with not having family members watch him. And so um, I just kind of gave my mom a call and thought, saw what she thought. And Angela, in order to, for you to be able to afford all those airline tickets, um, how do you do it? Do you wait for bargains and then just buy a whole bunch of them? Or how does it work? No, Southwest has only uh, purchased, um, sometimes a special sale too. We buy a whole bunch of them one month or two months at a time. Andrea has a schedule laid out and then we do that. And if sometimes we buy the ticket for my husband and myself, both of them, so that if some, one, one person has something happen to one person, then the other person takes uh, take over. Even a backup. So it, that sounds good. Andrea yeah, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> and Andrea and Angela, we're going to have to leave it there because we're out of time. Little Noah is a very lucky little guy to have both of you go into such uh, efforts for him. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.